Good afternoon. Thanks so much for tuning in to 12 News at Noon. I'm Tracy Kennick, and we have some new developments into that fatal crash that happened overnight. Let's get right to that. Justice of the Peace Ben Collins saying 56-year-old Nelson Wheaton of Beaumont was the person killed in that crash. It happened around 8.30 last night in front of Kinsel Ford's parking lot in Beaumont. Beaumont police still trying to piece together exactly what happened in the crash. Getting ready to give the green light. That's a message coming from Governor Greg Abbott's office. He put a message out on Twitter saying more Texans need to get back to work. And that's giving some people hope. 12 News reporter Victoria DeLeon puts it into perspective for us. After nearly six months of living with restrictions, Texas is starting to see more reopenings meaning more people are out and about, starting with back to school. Most districts in Southeast Texas have made their returns with Nederland ISD being the latest. I mean, some people are nervous, you know, uh, but I would say for the most part, everybody's just ready to get back to sort of to normal <laughs> for them, you know. But normal these days looks different. Schools do have new rules as a result of the still spreading virus. Most requiring face coverings, enforcing social distancing and an extra emphasis on hand hygiene. And Tuesday, the Beaumont Children's Museum was able to reopen after being closed for months. After being closed for almost 20 weeks, Poor Brothers Brewery will be reopening Thursday. In Houston, where more reopenings are happening, Mayor Sylvester Turner says they're still holding back on large outdoor gatherings. We all want to return to some sort of normalcy while keeping safety at the forefront. But let me stress that there is nothing normal about COVID-19. Some of the strictest rules fell on nursing homes to protect the most vulnerable. But now Texas is allowing limited visitation in facilities that don't have any COVID-19 cases. Over the last few months, Governor Abbott made it clear that shutting down the state again would be the very last option. In a tweet from last week, he says COVID cases and hospitalization numbers have gone down since his last orders, while also hinting at more reopenings. So while the rules may not be as strict as they were just a few months ago, health officials continue to ask that we all do everything we can to slow down the spread of COVID-19. In Beaumont, Victoria De Leon, 12 News. And taking a look outside this afternoon, beautiful day, a few clouds in the sky. Let's get an update now from Christiana Ramos in our Storm Tracker Center with a look at our afternoon forecast. Well, if you are out there cleaning up, it is going to be another hot day into tomorrow. So make sure you're drinking plenty of water. We have heat indices in the triple digits, so it is going to feel like 100 degrees outside. So again, if you're cleaning up out there, wear your sunscreen, protect your skin because our UV index says it is very hot. High. We have low chances of rain today. We might have some isolated showers into this evening. But again, just drink plenty of water and make sure you take caution if you're out there today. All right. Thank you, Christiana. Turning now to the latest in the fight against the coronavirus. We saw an uptick in positive cases both locally and across Texas on Wednesday with more than 4,000 new cases across the state and many of those coming from our Texas prisons. There were also 139 deaths. Looking at the big board, a whopping 259 new cases in our area, 159 of those out of Liberty County, Jefferson County, reporting 55 new cases and two new deaths. But it's not all bad news. As we look at the trends, we're still moving in the right direction. Included in our local count, five Southeast Texas Food Bank staff members who tested positive for the virus. According to a news release, after an initial case was confirmed, there was a mandatory screening of all staff members and that revealed four more cases. All the positive staff members are now quarantined and not permitted to return to work until they receive a negative test result. The release says the food bank has been frequently cleaning and sanitizing in an effort to stop the spread. If you're collecting unemployment, you want to listen up. You'll soon see a dip in your paycheck. That extra $300 a week for Texans collecting unemployment will end this week. That money was provided by FEMA after the extra $600 through the CARES Act expired. The Texas Workforce Commission says it cannot extend payments beyond that date because the money provided by FEMA was limited. We're learning more about the COVID-19 vaccine trial that was halted after one of the volunteers became ill with what appears to be a neurological condition. Meanwhile, the Surgeon General and the doctor who run the National Institute of Health are promising to stand against political pressure to fast track a vaccine. Tom Costello has more on the impacts of this setback. 
From the doctor who runs the NIH and the U.S. Surgeon General, a vow not to let political pressure rush a COVID vaccine before it's ready. There will be no shortcuts. This vaccine will be safe, it will be effective, <laughs> or it won't get moved along. I just hope Americans will choose to take the information they need uh, from scientists and physicians and not from politicians. Their unprecedented comments come after nine drug company CEOs made a similar promise. And as drug giant AstraZeneca has paused its vaccine trials after one of the participants, a woman in Britain, developed symptoms consistent with transverse mellitus, a serious inflammation of the spinal cord. AstraZeneca says no final diagnosis has been confirmed. The CEO this morning. So essentially, the process is always the, in vaccines trials that if you have an event um, that you didn't expect, then you stop to look at it and explore it and study it. And that's what happened uh, in our case. Worldwide, tens of thousands of volunteers have signed up for the now paused AstraZeneca trial. One volunteer in South Africa says she's undeterred by the pause, still hoping to be part of the solution. It's an opportunity to save the world. Two other drug companies, Pfizer and Moderna, also have vaccine candidates in phase three trials. I wouldn't be surprised, though, if, they, if the regulators ask the Data Safety Monitoring Board to go back and look through the data that's been accrued so far to look for any indication that this side effect may be appearing in the other clinical trials. While President Trump has been pushing for a vaccine before Election Day, the nation's health experts continue to say it will likely be late this year or early next year before the FDA approves a vaccine. It's unclear how long AstraZeneca's trial will stay on hold, but Dr. Anthony Fauci says the pause proves the system is working. There is a positive bit of a silver lining to this, that the system is working in trying to protect people with regard to safety. An independent safety committee in the UK will now look at the woman who became ill and determine whether there's any connection between the vaccine and her illness. AstraZeneca says if it can restart trials soon, it should know by the end of the year whether, in fact, the drug is effective. I'm Tom Costello in Washington. Back to you. Five years in prison, that's the sentence this guy, known as the Beaumont Bomber, has received. Jonathan Torres left a bomb at the Starbucks restaurant on Dallin Road in Beaumont and detonated another bomb at St. Stephen's Episcopal Church two years ago. Beaumont investigators were able to link Torres to the two bombs through similar components and postcards he left behind. Torres was found guilty last year. In Fort Arthur, if you want to learn more about Valero's property buyout, a town hall is being held tomorrow. It'll be done in person and on Zoom. It's hosted by Port Arthur Community in Action. The town hall will provide information to homeowners interested in selling their property on the west side to Valero. If you plan to attend in person, you'll need to take along a lawn chair and a mask. That meeting starts at 6 o'clock.